Hi everyone, good morning. I don't really know if it's morning where you are, but it's, um, the sun is just coming up here in Tennessee where we are. And um, I've just been so excited to talk to you outside while the sun is rising. It's kind of overcast today, so you won't, <laughs> you won't actually, I don't think see much of it, but the light will hopefully continue to get a little brighter. And um, It's an honor and a joy to be with you. Uh, I wish I could be there in person and squeeze all of you and pray for all of you and hear your stories and um, it would be so wonderful. But I, I do know that there is such a gift in this season there's such a glory in this season that we couldn't experience another way. These are the moments when we uh, we get to call out to God and we see him answer. We hear him answer us without anyone laying hands on our heads, without anyone, you know, no encounter being attached to uh, a leader or s someone else. Because this is this is when God wants to make himself obvious to us, he wants to remind us that uh, when we call, he answers that he is. Um, the here with us, God, we, we're finding out in this moment what we've cultivated with him in his presence, which is not a byproduct of him. He is his presence. It's not just something he sends when he can't be with us. He is his presence. And so when in this season, when we're all kind of, it's been quiet and lonely for many, I realize, and it's, there's so much chaos in the world that's risen to the surface. It's always been there. It's always been there, but it's rising to the surface because um, it's being exposed. Stillness exposes those things. And I believe it's why the Lord said, be still and know. There's not another way to know him, to, to know until you get still. And when we get still, it reveals all of these things that have been living inside, that have been um, our way of being, our way of doing. And, and it reveals to us if we've been more attached to the, our plans, or if we've been more attached to our programs at church, if we've been more attached to our position leading a group of people or our desire, or even our just desire to lead a group of people. Oh man, I was, I was on course to do this thing, to do this internship. I was on uh, you know, it was the plan to do this. And then, and then God would do this for me. But the gift is that we find out where we really are with him, what we've cultivated with him in secret. And so, um, while there's turmoil, there's always an invitation from the Lord in these, in these times to come in deeper, to, to be still and know him. And when we when we cultivate that stillness here, even when there's chaos all around, we can be still. We, we know how to sit at that table and eat the meal that's prepared for us in the presence of our enemies with Jesus. So let's, let's pray. And then I wanna read some scripture together. Um, Cause my heart is, uh, my heart is burning for you and and uh, and for these really simple truths. I believe he's reminding us it's simple again. So Jesus, we we come before you and we ask for your revelation light to come and be with us in these next few moments. And in every class, with every teacher, with every friend that comes to visit, in this school that your revelation light would shine on us that we would um we would read something for the first time in your word and it would come to life or maybe we'd read something for the you know for the thousandth time in your word but this time it would it would have a fresh anointing a fresh revelation that we would have eyes to see you and ears that hear you and a heart that wants to understand you and so we we turn our affection toward you um, in this moment. We turn our affection toward you. We, we give you our attention. We stand at attention inside and out. And we 
say, let it be unto us here as you've said, as you dreamed um, it would be. We, we want to get everything we can from your word. It's, it's layers and layers deep and it would take an eternity. It will take an eternity to even begin comprehending it. You are endless and your revelation comes in so many layers. It's far beyond what's obvious. It's, it's, um, it's a treasure to be sought out. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us a value, a value for your word because you are your word, a value for your presence because you are your presence. You're not separate from anything you do because you're complete in yourself. The three in one God. Three in one God, Father, Son, and Spirit. You are complete in yourself. You lack nothing. And when we come before you, when we're one with you, when we have union with you, we will lack nothing. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I would love if you'd turn with me to <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Um, I'll give you a second to get there. Um, there are so many voices speaking out in this time. So many, so many people um, who are really, really beautiful. So many wonderful leaders. So many wise leaders that are speaking up and helping to counsel us through the days that we're living in. There are also so many people, um, so many voices speaking that are... Uh, that are counseling, but it's not wise counsel. It's not godly counsel. It's um, it's self motivated. It's self taught. It's um, very DIY. It's like we're in a, the generation of um, don't call an expert. Just Google it. Don't don't um, you know? Don't spend the money. We can do this for free on our own. Um, now, my husband, I'm I'm getting somewhere with this. Um, Ephesians five. My husband is a builder. He's a, um, a craftsman. He, he's brilliant, and he, um, he's just, he cares about the excellence. And when he builds something, he's not just thinking about the people who will enjoy it in those first few years. He's thinking about the people. Um, the generations that are coming after will the ch will their children sit at this table? Will their will their children enjoy this room? Will their children's children gather here? Will this piece of furniture last? Um, can it hold up under the weight of generations? Um, and so he's always wanting to find the best, most solid, sturdy way to do it. There's an excellence. He has value. Um, not just for the immediate, but he has value for generations coming. So in this DIY generation, like, um, for instance, in, in the house we moved into, it was a to it's a total God house. It's a sweet farmhouse here in Tennessee. We love it. It is the house God gave to us. But inside of it, we're learning all over again. We're, we've been reminded of the simple things. Um, and it's really lovely. And he thinks about these things all the time in his way because he's a builder and I think about them all the time in my way because I'm um, I think about building the spirit so the Lord really he brought us together in this beautiful sense that he's he's got this practical hands-on life you could reach out and touch it thing and I'm like you know like sort of up in the clouds in this way but we both meet in the middle and um, ask the Holy Spirit to uh, bring the mind, body, and spirit connection together and that we would teach each other. So I learn from him all the time. Sorry, I'm talking fast because I'm excited. Um, when we moved into this house, you know, he's as he's working on it, everything he opened up was like a DIY project. Every wall, the wiring, the, um, the what do you call it? The... Uh, the the lighting the plumbing the toilet i mean everything you open it it was just about to fall apart and he's like if i hadn't opened this right now we would have had a flood and he, he's so he gets so frustrated with this diy thing because he's like you can't build a home that is going to last for generations and 
that you're not going to have to spend more and more money on and fix over and over. You, you, if you don't properly start with the foundation from the ground up, if you don't properly build this house, then it's going to be very hard to live in. Um, and he's like, it's, we can't be a people who cut corners. We have to take the time. Money shows value. And so when we, it's not about having all the money. It's about showing value. It's about everything we have being for the glory of the Lord, being for his honor. So when we put, when we invest in something, even when we don't have much, at least we're doing it the most excellent way. We bring in a specialist. If you needed a surgery, you're not gonna, you're not gonna Google it unless you're like, you know, abandoned somewhere in a forest and you're stuck alone. That's fantastic. Thankful for that, for an emergency. But the point is that you're not, you're not going to call someone who doesn't know what they're doing to give you an open heart surgery. We're living in the day when it's like everything is, uh, well, you know, go to therapy for that. I believe in therapy. Go to therapy when you need it. But here's my point. All of these things as our leader instead of Jesus are dangerous to us. Because essentially we're doing it all on our own and we think that we can accomplish it on our own and we think that we can have an answer coming through um, a book that's not the word of God. Um, it's a helpful tool. It's, it's not him. Okay. It may be something he led someone to write, but I'm not going to go and learn about Jesus. I, I'm not going to come to know Jesus by um, reading a, a book on self-help. Now hear me, hear me, hear me. I believe in those books. I've read the, a lot of those books. The, again, as a servant, when the Holy Spirit is central and, we've, and we're following his lead, that's amazing. But we can't survive on someone else's teaching. We need to know what the Lord is saying. There are lots of voices. There are a lot of people saying, fight this battle. Fight this battle. Say something about this. Stand up for this. They're all stunning, important issues that the Lord is longing for us to care about because he cares about them. But if we don't first minister to the Lord, if we don't first do what we see the Lord doing, what we read the Lord saying, what we um, find in his nature, because Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. And the Holy Spirit is always leading us to Jesus, who's leading us to the father. They're one. And if we're not following their lead, we'll find ourselves in all sorts of battles and fights that he did not ask for us to fight. And not only will they take us out, but we will lose our influence. <laughs> Ephesians 5. I hope you don't feel like I'm yelling at you. I'm trying to keep it short and concise. Um, okay, help me, Lord. I, I want to read this. I'm in the NASB version, but I also really, really love the Passion Translation. Brian Simmons, I know, just had such an encounter with the Lord about making that translation. And it's really beautiful. If, you, if you'll go back... Um, after this time, if you'll go back and read it through there and just a bit at a time, please, when you read the word, and I'm sure these guys, thank you. Thank you, Corey and Anna and Caleb and Rachel. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. I love you. And I look forward to being with you in person again. Um, I, we've got to slow down. We're not reading the word for quantity. We're reading because it's quality. We have to slow down and let it change us. Okay. Read through and then go back and read it again and again and slow down. Let it get deep, deep down inside of you. So it stays with you. Chapter five says is in, in my Bible, they've titled it be, be imitators of God. And that's what we're going after. There's so many things to imitate. So many people, so many things we absorb from the people we look up to, from the people who are doing what we want to be doing in a sense. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. 
Um, it's important to look up to mothers and fathers and teachers as they walk in the way of Jesus so that we can um, learn another way. In the love chapter, it talks about, you know, now we see in part, but then we'll fully know. All of us only have a piece of the revelation of Christ. He's endless and we need each other. We need each other to challenge and to help us to see a part of him that we're not seeing, a side of him that we're not familiar with. And um, so it's important to community and leadership but we're not wanting to imitate anyone else but the Christ. When we yield to Jesus, we give up our right to have opinions about everyone else's life. And this is a lesson that was hard for me to learn as a girl growing into an adult. You know, when you're in prophetic culture, it's very easy to have what I call prophetic opinions. And perhaps you've heard something from the Lord, but you've taken it into your own hands and often form an opinion or a judgment about someone that the Lord did not give to you. And we feel empowered by it somehow because we think, we think that, oh, if the Lord showed me, then it must be accurate. And then we gather in little groups and we say, I'm concerned about so-and-so, or we say, I don't know what I think about so-and-so, or, or maybe even in this time, like you see different people doing different things. Like, um, you know, in this issue of this horrific issue of racism that's systemic, it's been here for ages, or or abortion, or homosexuality, or, um, you know, whatever the issue is that the Lord is burning in your heart, hear me, there is so much to imitate. <clears throat> but the Lord is saying, will you look at me? Will you zoom in and zoom out? Zoom in, zoom out. We're going to zoom in close to the issue. We're going to weep with those who weep. We're going to give them a voice, those who don't have a voice. And then we're going to zoom out so that we can see the whole picture. Okay? Nobody can stay zoomed in right now or, or we'll miss what he's doing. We have to zoom in, zoom out. I had a dream just before quarantine hit. Lots of dreams just before quarantine hit. Well, one of them was literally a dream. Um, where it, it looked like I was looking through a camera lens and the entire time I'm zooming in. It's just zooming in, duh, 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 focus, still. And then it would zoom back out, duh, 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 focus. And the entire dream was that. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, we're in a zoom in, zoom out season. You will miss the whole picture if you stay zoomed in on one thing. And if you, and if you stay zoomed out on the whole thing, you won't actually sit with the suffering and I'm the man of sorrows <clears throat> if you want to know me in my suffering you have to sit with those who are suffering whether you even understand it or not and so in this day we have to zoom in zoom out okay be imitators of God verse one therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. The imitators of God is beloved children. A child who knows that they're loved and adored is always watching their father, their mother, always watching, always watching to see what they'll do to imitate them, to be like them. Be imitators of God as beloved children when we know that he loves us. When our identity, this is the thing, guys. We're, you're in a school about identity. You're, you're finding out who you are. The only way to truly know who you are is to look at the one who made you. To know the one who formed you together in your mother's womb. You won't find out who you are on in the news. You won't find out who you are in someone else's book. Jesus, this we're, we've got to look at Jesus. We're made in his image, in his image. Whoo! Uh, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us in offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. He made the way that no one else could make. 
what make. He's also, he's the way, the truth, and the life. So when we look at him and when we imitate what we see Jesus doing, what we hear him saying, when we, when we give up the right to do it our way and we go, okay, what did you say? When you were in a scenario like this, what did you do? What were you like? What's your nature? Then he, we see how he lived. It was sacrificial. He was willing to suffer. He gave everything. And none of us will ever suffer to that extent. But he showed us the way. He showed us the way to offer ourselves as a fragrant sacrifice. Verse 3, but immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as it is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Now hear me. I want you to hear what this is saying. I don't want you to listen to a voice of shame. If you're in a process, Father, I ask that you would silence the voice of shame that, that tries to lie and speak to us the voice of shame or even the voice of pride that tells us we already know these things. Lord, I ask that your kindness would begin to drown out the, the, the voice of the shamer. Lord, we ask that it would begin to drown out um, that voice that keeps us from being able to receive the truth and correction in love. Because when you, when you know the sound of the Father's voice, you won't we won't read these things with condemnation. We'll read them like a love letter, like a father who loves his children corrects them. Okay. So hear me. And I'm passionately saying it. I want you to hear my heart. I'm not wanting to yell at you. I'm just, just that I'm out here by myself in the outside. So <laughs> there's no gauge. I'm just hollering. Um, there is a, there's a place in God. I, I believe that when we, when we're growing and maturing, I, I really think that there are seasons when some things are permissible. There are things that the Lord's like, I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> they're still saying this, they're like swearing, for instance. Some people believe that it's sin and some people don't. I would suggest to you this, that it becomes sin. I would suggest that the closer and nearer you get to the Lord, the more we become like him, the less we, the less we need those things. They begin to fall off of us. And there's a place in love where you, you begin to yield your right to spout off in anger or practice your freedom in the way of just garbage mouth. I think we start to look at him so much. If you were in the presence of Jesus, the closer we get to him, like someone who's newly saved, who's never known these things. I've heard people at the altar swear up a storm because they're so amazed at what the Lord is doing to them. And that is beautiful. I don't think the Lord's co correcting that in that moment. It's their most honest response. But I do believe we get to a place of relationship and depth with the Lord that things like that begin to fall off. And we realize the deeper in his presence we go, the more like him we become. We go, oh, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't have a filthy mouth. Oh, Jesus didn't make, that's what she said jokes. Jesus didn't make uh, sexually impure joking. He didn't make comments about people. Hear me, not the voice of shame. He, he, is, he is truly, truly wanting to help us walk in righteousness. And the more we know him, Here's my husband. Hi, honey. The more that we imitate him, the more we walk with him, I think there are things that, not in a religious way, like maybe some of us did when we were young, like I did. There's a love that takes over you and you go, oh, I don't even want to say that anymore. I don't want it to be a part of my life. I don't want it to be a part of my my vocabulary, the word says that will be held accountable for every idle word. I don't want to waste my words. If I'm going to say something, I would rather it be to exhort, to teach, to encourage, that it would be, it would be to say what he's saying. If I don't know the answer, I don't want to try to be the answer and fill my conversation with self-righteousness. I just, I want to go, Hey, I don't actually know the answer to that. I'm, I'm not your solution, but I know who is and, and we go to the word we go to his words so i'm just i'm i'm asking you to take that before the lord um 
and to be humble enough to say, yeah, maybe I don't need that anymore. There must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting. It matters what we watch, friends. It matters what we watch. What we put in is, is what will come out, what we listen to. I, I am a major R&B girl. Listen, 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 listen. I love R&B. I'll never forget my dad in my teenage years coming into my bedroom and I was dancing to a song. I think it was getting jiggy with it, which is not, it's fine. It's, I, but I, I walked in, I was, you know, I think I was doing the whole dance and my dad just rolls in and starts doing the dance with me. And really sweetly, I'll never forget this. He just goes, be careful how much of that you listen to or that's what'll come out. And he danced right out of the room and he closed my door. And it's always stuck with me because it was the kindness of a father to say, hey, there's nothing wrong with this moment. I trust you to listen to what's pure. I trust that you, you have that spirit, the Holy Spirit gauge inside of you, but be wise. And I learned that there are just things that, um, that I stopped listening to. And it wasn't because it was sin in that moment necessarily, but the Lord was saying, ah, oh, you're asking me for my presence and I'm looking for a place to rest. And so while I, um, as a musician would listen to honor uh, musicians and their life story because often that's where the music is coming from I would do that but sustained listening what is continually going into my ears it can't be it can't be it can't be those those other things okay but rather than all these things rather than talking and gossip and slander and giving our opinion and constantly garbaging, sitting around to absorbing the spirit of politics and, and giving our opinions and judgments on any presidential candidate or any, all these different things or leaders because of who they vote or who they support. Listen, I think the political spirit is dangerous. I really do. If, if we're not careful, but instead of wasting all of our time, it says, but rather give thanks. Look for the gift. Ask the Lord. Be begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for leadership. Begin to bless. Begin to, to if, if we're sitting around talking to, you know, about someone, we don't want to talk more than we pray, okay? We, we want to go, oh, I'm concerned about this person. Let's go before the Lord right now and intercede for them, okay? I want to move through this. I know we're running out of time. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous that that um, jealousy that is not a godly jealousy who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of God, of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Hear me. The wrath of God is reserved for those who have, who have rejected him, who have, who have hardened their hearts to the tenderness of his love and who refuse to let go of uh, their sin sickness and their pride. Lord, give us hearts of obedience, make us willing wombs, soften our hearts for the things that soften your heart. Do not be partakers with them for you were formerly darkness. I love the way this is for you. You and I were formerly darkness, not just we were into darkness. Formerly we were darkness, but now you are children. You are children of light. You are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light for the fruit of the light, the fruit of the light, the fruit of us being in the light. Who is God? The fruit of us walking in his light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. I want to say this to you because I've had this picture over and over for you. I know we need to wrap it up. I don't know if we'll um, make it through this whole thing. There is 
something about sitting in when the sun rises. It's why I came out here, even though we didn't really see it. But there's something about watching the sunrise in the morning. If you, if you don't normally do it, I just, I would encourage you if you can with the schedule that you have to just, to try it a few days this next week. Try it, try it um, every now and then, even if it's once a week. Creation reveals to us. It's always shouting about who God is if we'll slow down and, and observe and listen. It's, um, it's declaring the glory of God. And when the sun rises, it's like, it's like a little, a literal reflection of the Son of God rising over us with His light. Psalm 19 says that the sun, the sun is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. So you sit in the sun and you watch it rise. It's like you feel the warmth on your skin. It's like the bridegroom himself coming out of his chamber for you, his bride. The next verse says that the sun is like a strong man ready to run its, his course. And I think it's so beautiful. It's, it, there's something that it does to be in nature, to, to see the sunrise in the morning. One morning I was sitting on our porch. I was sitting on uh, our porch looking at the forest and the, um, the water. And it was dark. I, I couldn't, I, um, I went out before, it was pitch black. I couldn't see anything. I could just hear animals and creatures. And as the sun began to rise and come through the trees and I felt it on my skin very, ever so slowly. I mean, like watch the whole thing. I said, Lord, what is it about the sun rising that is so life changing? What is it? He said, because it's like my light rising over you because I'm rising over you with healing in my wings. I'm, I'm rising over you. I'm coming out of my chamber for you. I am, I am coming for you, my bride. And when I, when you're in my light, everything comes into clarity. When you, when you're in darkness, you can, you can hear, but you can't see and you're not sure what's there. But when the light gets brighter and brighter, you're like, Oh, you can see, Oh, there's, there's water in front of me. Oh, there's a tree in front of me. And when the light gets brighter, you're like, Oh, that's the lake. Oh, that's, an oak tree. When we when we walk in the light as children of light, we become clear. We can see things for who they really are. Even even ourselves, our identity becomes clear because we're walking in His light. <clears throat> for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not partake in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. How do we expose them? I love the Passion Translation. It says, it talks about, calls it revelation light. That's what we carry now in Christ as we look at him, as the sun, as the sun rises inside of us and over us. It's revelation light. Does this mean we go around exposing people constantly? No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about light, the light of God being so bright inside of us that it illuminates the darkness and it exposes every dark thing around us, okay? We walk in so much light and so much of his presence and with the fruit of goodness and righteousness and truth and it just exposes. You don't have to go digging digging for people. You don't have to go slandering and, and, and crushing them and exposing them and you did this and you... I'm not saying there's not a time to call someone else but out, but there's a way and the spirit behind it is that we carry the light. And that light should be so bright that people around you just find themselves not wanting to do certain things anymore because it's the Lord with us. It's not because we're condemning them or we're, we're not the Holy Spirit. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. We thank you, Lord, for everything that becomes visible is light. When we sit in the sun, when we sit in his presence, the darkness is illuminated and, and things turn into light and we see things for what they really are. For this reason, it says, awake sleeper, arise and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. 
Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. We can't think ourselves wise in our own eyes. We need the wisdom of the ages. He's the one who sees the thing, everything from the beginning to the end, not us. Making the most of your time because the days are evil. We won't waste our time with battles that aren't ours to fight if we'll stay in the light and we'll let him lead us. If we make much of Jesus, he's the good shepherd and he'll lead us. Then we won't pick up swords and wound people with them because he's going to lead us. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. What is it saying here, that wine is the devil? No, that's not what it's saying. Um, so let's deal with our religion there. There's no, we're not saying wine is of the devil. Jesus poured wine and broke bread, okay? It says, don't be drunk with wine. We're not to be drunk or consumed by any other substance, but his Spirit, okay? drinks wine all sorts of alcohol they're known as spirits i think it's interesting that we're, we're we're not meant to be drunk on those spirits we're meant to be drunk on the holy spirit why so that we can walk in wisdom so that we're not foolish so that he can lead us we're not being drunk with anything else we're not being um ruled or consumed by anything else when when someone is drunk they're completely they're they're unable to make clear decisions they're unable to make their own powerful decisions they've even lost their own control their self-control which is a fruit of the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the lord always giving thanks for all things in the name of our lord jesus christ to god even the father and be subject to one another in the fear of christ it requires humility to imitate. It requires humility to imitate Jesus because he's humble. It will require our humility to be subject to one another, to learn from one another, to be like the Acts church. Where it's, it, there's, a, there's a verse, there's a little verse in there. It's one of my favorites. It says, and there was no need among them I believe they took care of each other. I believe they challenged each other. I believe they corrected each other in love. They said, I, I don't know about that. This is what the word says. This is what he said. And I believe we're meant to live in that with honor. <clears throat> to go to someone, if you see them stumbling, go straight to them, not around them. Don't go talk around them. Go straight to them and say, hey, I, I've, been, I've been hearing this. I've been seeing this. Could we, could we look at what the Lord is saying together could we look at what he's doing could we pray together I'm, i feel concerned that um you're stepping outside of his way help me understand um even going back speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs i love when, when we're full of the spirit when when we have a union please read the passion translation when we have a union with the blessed trinity we commune with him when when we live from this place of connection with God then we will live from connection and it won't just be a collection of information we're not just going to collect information from here here and here but we're living from connection from from union when we live from that place then songs and, and hymns and spiritual songs that's what flows out of us for one another those those things that encourage those things that pierce straight for the for the heart my little girl is a tiny trumpet and children are trumpets they really are we have to be humble enough to hear them and she'll she'll burst into a song but singing a song that's a total prophecy and it's very specific it's not it's it's very specific to the moment and i mean i i hit my knees because i'm it's exactly what the Lord is saying. And she's not prompted. We're not, I'm clean. I'm could be doing dishes. And next thing I know, she's singing at the top of her lungs, this prophetic song. And I just, I feel the fear of the Lord <clears throat> that these are the things that flow out of us in communion, not garbage talk, not discouragement, not opinions about how this person led worship or that person led worship. And I don't know when they sing, I just, well, or we, 
We don't listen to someone else leading and go, ah, I could do that. I just feel like if I had the mic, I could do that. I could just feel like, oh, just feel like I have something. No, we would just engage in worship. We would just adore him because he's endlessly worthy. We have to give our lives to imitate him. He's the reward. He's the reward, not the position that you could ever get one day. We don't go to schools of ministry. We, we can't go to schools of ministry and schools of the heart and identity schools. We can't go to these schools for the purpose of doing this great thing for God. It has to be for the purpose of knowing him, of really knowing him. Because when that day comes and we cross over into the other side, none of this position will come with us. None of our gifts, none of the things None of, none of those things are needed in heaven. He doesn't need our gifts. I talked to Michael Koulianos about this. He's so brilliant, wise. He said, Steph, when we go to heaven, we don't take our gifts with us, but we keep our stature. We keep our authority that we built with God. What is authority? Our spiritual authority is determined by what we do with his anointing. They're not the same thing. God anoints all of us. He's anointed us. And, and there are certain people he anoints specifically for certain things. He doesn't anoint everyone for all the same things. That is true. But he pours out his spirit on us to mark us and to give us the ability to walk, like give us the help to walk out the thing that is on our lives to walk out. But just because we're anointed doesn't mean we have the authority with it. What we do with the anointing, which is his presence, it is him. He is the anointing. What we do with him is what determines the authority we have. And we, cra we can't crave the authority. We have to crave him. Hunger is inevitable. But our appetites must be cultivated. Desire has to be cultivated. If you've eaten donuts all your life, there's no shame. But you can retrain your body to crave a meat or a salad. You can crave your body to train, you can train your body to crave something new. We have to do this for our spirits. Holy Spirit, thank you for this time. So, so many things I said and it was so crammed. And Lord, I just asked for the ability that anything that was just mine, that it would fall off and they would just absorb your word. And anything that was from you, that they, it would just take deep, deep root. And I ask, Father, that these things, your word, your presence, you, you, that we would be imitators of you as we look at you, that we would fall madly in love with you, and that we would find communion with the God who is three in one. And we would find ourselves right in the center of everything and every, every bit of who we were meant to be, because you are the one who made us. We, we're the image of you, where it's like this little image of Jesus. I'm a, a, a specific, tiny reflection of the wholeness of you in the earth. Or we want to be everything that we are meant to be. We want you to put us on like a glove. We want to know you at the end of all this, really know you, not just know about you, not just be collectors of information, but we want to connect to who you are. We want to be one with you. You're the reward. You are the exceedingly great reward. You're the joy set before us. Pray that you would give each one vision for the generations coming and even more for that city where the lamb is the light, that city where you alone illuminate, where none of our gifts, none of our doing will be needed only our being with you back to the garden back to communion where worship was the overflow the most natural response to beholding you i thank you for this school i thank you for my friends and i bless them in jesus name i pray that each one of you would thrive in this season and the glory of the lord would fill your homes every square inch and then it wouldn't lift i love you I pray that this is a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Amen, friends.